Hello, in this lecture we're going to talk about the master budget. We're going to go through the sales budget, the production budget, and the materials budget. At the end of this we will be able to list the components of the master budget, create the sales budget, create the production budget, and create the materials budget. So we're going to start off, we just want to look at the list and the activities that go through the master budget for a production company, something that, a company that produces things. And this is similar to many types of budgets. When we think about the most basic type of budget, many people think of, well, let's take a look at the income statement, how we did last year, you know, basically divided by 12, make some adjustments, and that will be our budget for the months going forward to the next year. That's the most basic kind of components of the budget. And that's how any budget kind of starts off. We're going to look at last time's material, what happened, how did we perform, and then make some adjustments into the future. As we get more sophisticated, of course, we want to think about other things into the future other than just past performance, like what's the economy going to be like, what are some changes, what's going to be the effect on the, on the sales and our expenses and whatnot going forward. We're going to look at a production budget, a production budget for a company that produces things being more complex in many ways and being more uh, linear in the way we have to build it because of the fact that we're producing things. And the same principles will apply to many different types of budget. So we're going to have to start off with the sales budget. That's the first place we need to start off no matter what type of budget we have. How much are we going to sell? In terms of units of sale, if we produce inventory and sell inventory, we need to think about how many units we're going to sell and then how much revenue we're going to get on that. Even if we take it down to our personal budget, we want to think about, well, how much are we going to earn in the future time period? For many individuals and many businesses, the amount we may earn may be fairly constant. That's why we can take last year's performance and basically budget it forwards. But it may change as well. For many people, it may change. Our, our salary may vary. And that's the first thing we want to take a look at because we're going to base the rest of the budget on that. Then once we know how many units we're going to sell, we want to come up with the production budget. How much stuff are we going to produce in terms of like inventory? How many things do we need to produce? And you might be saying, well, that's easy. We know how many things we're going to sell. Therefore, we're just going to take how many things we're going to sell. That's how many we need to produce. And that would be the case if it was like our first year of production and we didn't want and we thought we were going to be very exact in our numbers. But we probably want to have a cushion to stuff. We want to produce more than we're going to sell in case that we sell more than we thought we were going to sell. And we also probably had stuff that we didn't sell last time. We had a cushion from last time. So we need to take those two things into consideration in terms of figuring out how many things we need to produce in order to meet the sales and these other kind of requirements that we want to have in terms of having a cushion in the inventory. Once we know how many things we're going to produce, then we can think about how much material we need to produce them. So let's say we're like making guitars or something. We know how many guitars we want to make. Now we need to figure out how much basically wood we want to put in how much wood do we need to buy in terms of the production of the guitar? Same kind of inventory type of questions. And we have the same kind of problems. It's not just that we need to buy the amount of wood in order to produce that many guitars. We need to figure out, uh, do we want to have an ending uh, inventory of wood left over? Do we have any wood that's still in <laughs> the inventory here? Same thing in terms of direct uh, labor, which is a bit more straightforward. We're going to say, how much direct labor will it take then to make these many units of production that we need to produce and the overhead all the other stuff that's going to be involved what's going to be the budget for the overhead to produce this many units this isn't directly tied out it doesn't have to ha be happening next but the capital expenditures do we want to buy new uh, larger pieces of equipment and things like this uh, we need to plan out whether we have the cash flow and whether we have uh, we can finance any more large expenditures and then the selling and administrative budget these are going to be more the period costs these are usually more costs that we can do kind of what we think about in a traditional budget. Look at what happened last time and project it forward because they're usually more fixed in nature rather than variable in nature along with the production. Then we can do the cash budget, the cash flow that will happen. And then we can kind of finally think about our budgeted balance sheet that we always think about, our budgeted income statement and our budget statement of cash flow. So here's the statements that we're going to create. And again, most of us think about the budget oftentimes in terms of the income statement. Here, here's how we're going to perform in the future in terms of the income statement. But uh, if we break this out into this process, we can do this first and then, then you know, create our standard balance sheets from these projections. All right, so we're going to start off with the sales budget. So sales budget here, and we'll just break through these first three, and then we'll talk about the rest of the budgets at a later time. So sales budget. We're going to, say the, we're going to do this for the uh, quarter of July, August, and September. 
in July, we're going to say in units, we're going to sell 20,600 units. Now, how do we come up with that number? If it's a book problem, they're going to have to give us that number. And if it's real life, then we're going to have to project, well, how much did we produce last time period? What's our traditional uh, sales for July? What's the market like in July? And all this kind of stuff and come up with the amount of numbers that we're going to produce in units. We'll multiply that times how much we're going to charge per unit. And that will, of course, give us the dollar revenue. So we get the unit revenue. We got the dollar revenue. We'll do the same thing for August. We're going to say we're going to produce 19,600 units. What do we come up with that number? Again, we're going to have to project it out and think, how did we do last year? What's the market like? How's things going to happen? But then we just multiply that times our 24 and we come up with the dollar amount for uh, 7,400. Same for September. We're just going to project the 20,100 book problem will give us that. In real life, we'll have to project that in some way. Probably a, a very significant process to do that. And we're going to have the 24, uh, the sales price. And that gives us the 42,400. Totals then would be 60,300 units. And we would have dollars in revenue of 1,447,200 in terms of revenue. Now that we know this, we can move forward. We need, how much do we need to make? How many units do we need to make if we're going to sell this many units? And you might think, well, we need to make uh, 60,300 if we're going to sell 60,300. But once again, think about the idea that we may have units that are already in here from last month. And we may want to have a cushion because we don't want to have exactly 60,300 units. We might sell more than that. We don't want to have a shortage in case we do better than we thought in terms of just the budget, just the plan here. So those two things being in, in the factor when we then calculate the production budget. So we have the sales budget up here. Now we're going to say the production budget. How, many, how much stuff and units do we need to produce? If we're producing guitars, how many guitars do we need to produce for uh, this quarter? We're going to break it out by month. So we're going to say July. We're going to say we're going to first do a calculation in terms of how much do we need in order to fulfill our cushion in terms of how much we want to have left over. We want to plan in to have a cushion in case we sell more than we thought. And so here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take the next month's sales. So in this case, it was the 19.6, 19.6. We're going to take the August 20,100, 20,100, 20,100. We're going to have to estimate what it would be for October and then put in the units for uh, October and September. We're taking next month's totals in terms of unit sales, multiplying that times 80%. Why? Because this is the standard policy that we came up with in order to have a cushion as of the ending inventory. This is what we want left over. We think we're going to sell so much and we want 80% uh, of next uh, month's sales left over. So if we were to multiply that out, the 19.6 times 80%, 15.680, 20,100 times 80%, 16,080, 20,006 times 80%, 16,480. That's what we want in ending inventory at the end of July in this case. And then we're going to say the budget unit sales. We're going to say the budgeted unit sales. We're just pulling these down. There's the 20. There's the 19.6. There's the 20,100. Though That's what we're going to actually sell during the period. So we're going to take what we want in the ending inventory plus what we think we're going to actually sell. That's how much we're going to need. That's going to be the units that we're going to need, the units available, the units that we would need to produce if we didn't already have some in there from last month but this is not our first year of operation so we have this is what we're, we need to sell plus the ending inventory cushion we're gonna have to subtract out from that what we have in there at the beginning so at the beginning we had uh, 16,694 we got the 15,680 that's gonna be of course the ending number here is the beginning number for the next month ending number here is the beginning number for the next month this is where we're starting out with because this is the ending number for the, the month prior to our budgeting process here. And so if we subtract this out, the 36,280 minus the 16,694 is the 19,586. The 36,680 min minus the 15,680 is the 20,000. The 36,580 minus the 16,80 is the 20,500. And that's the units that we need to then produce. So these are how many units we need to produce. Now, the next thing is, well, now we can think about the materials, the labor, the overhead. We're going to look at the materials next time. So if we need to produce, like, this is guitars. It would say if we're producing this many guitars, we got to say, well, how much wood do we need to get to buy in order to produce that many guitars? And you might be thinking, well, how much wood does it take for each guitar? We're going to have to just multiply how much wood it takes for each guitar 
and that's how much it's going to take. But same idea is here, and the same idea being that we already have some wood, probably from last month, and we want to have some extra wood in case we have to actually make more than that number, just in case, for whatever reason, in case our budget is different. We want to make sure that we have enough in order to cover the sales that we need to cover. So, therefore, we're going to do a similar calculation here for the material. So, here's our production budget here. We're going to use the production budget to create the raw materials budget. How much material do we need to buy to make the stuff we're going to produce? So, we got the production in units. We're just pulling uh, the production down, the production in units down. So, here's the 19. Here's the 20, here's the 20,005. The budgets are connected in this way. That's why we got to do it in this order. And then we're going to say materials required per unit. So if we're thinking about guitars, we could think, well, we're buying a plank of wood and we only need half the plank of wood per guitar. So we can make two guitars out of the one plank of wood. If we're talking about other types of things, it, it may mean that we need multiple units of material in order to create the guitar. So it depends what we're making. And so you got to be careful on how many units is it going to take to make it. In this case, it takes less than one unit in order to make uh, the, the product. Therefore, if we're going to make uh, 19,586, half times 0.5, it's going to take uh, 9,793 of planks of wood, in this case, that we're going to cut in half for each of uh, the units we're going to make. So same thing here, the 20,000 to 10, the, the 20,005 is uh, the 20,250. Then we're going to have the budgeted ending inventory. So this is how much we would have if uh, we didn't want any cushion at the end. But we do. We want to have some material left over. We want to have some wood left over at the end of the month. So we're going to say uh, have this cushion in here. Now the calculation for this, and it's going to be dependent. The problem is going to have to give it to you. Uh, in real life, we'll have to put in some policy. The policy here is that we're going to take next month's uh, number. We're going to multiply it times 0.5. So that's the policy of this company. So... Uh, that's going to be the 5,000. We're going to take in next month's the uh, 10,250 times 0.5, 5 to, uh, 5125. And we would have to know October's number, which, which apparently is 8,000, in order to come up with this 4,000 here. So then, if we then add these two up, we've got the materials needed for production. This is how much we want in Indian inventory. So the 9,793 plus the 5,000, 14,790. The 10, thousand plus the five one two five is the fifteen one twenty five and so on so this is the materials required if uh, we didn't have any in the beginning inventory that's how much we'd have to buy but we're saying we did have some in the beginning inventory and how much is in there at the beginning of the inventory well we started off with four thousand nine twenty five and then in the next month we've got five thousand of course the beginning uh inventory is now the ending inventory for the next month. And same here, the beginning inventory for this month is going to be a projected ending inventory for this month. All right, and then uh, we're going to say the materials purchased then is going to be the this number plus this number gives us the 9,868. Uh, 60, <laughs> the 15,125 plus the 5,000 is the 10,225. The 14,250 plus the uh, 5 one is the 9,125. We're going to multiply that times the material price per unit. So how much does it cost per unit? In this case, if we're talking about planks of wood, how much does it cost per plank of wood? This whole thing, we've been looking at units in terms of planks of wood. Now we got to turn that into dollars. And if we just multiply that out, then the 9,868 times the 21 is the 207,224, and so on and so on. And then if we add this up for the quarter, this is the sum in terms of dollars for the quarter. This is the sum in terms of units, in terms of, of uh, planks of wood or units of material in this case. <music>